Anatomy of the Skin, Hair and Nails, Part 2 Now that we've learned about the anatomy of the nail, its parts, functions, and how to care for it properly, let's move on to another very important part of our body that needs equal attention and care, the skin. Before we start our new topic, let's have a short review of what we learned yesterday. Who can still remember the parts of the nail? Let's see if you can recall. I'll show you a few questions. Raise your hand if you want to answer. 1. Which part of the nail is the whitish, crescent-shaped area at the base? A. Lunula. B. Cuticle. C. Matrix. D. Nail bed. 2. It is the transparent skin, called the true cuticle, which is gently scraped off or removed during a manicure. A. Nail wall. B. Cuticle. C. Matrix. D. Lunula. 3. What do we call the extended edge of the nail used for shaping or cutting? A. Free margin. B. Nail wall. C. Nail bed. D. Lunula. 4. Which bone supports and shapes both the nail matrix and nail bed? A. Matrix. B. Phalanx. C. Nail wall. D. Cuticle. 5. One of the most important parts of the nail where new nail cells are formed and nail growth begins. A. Nail bed. B. Matrix. C. Cuticle. D. Free edge. Very good. You still remember the nail parts and how to care for them. Just like our nails, other parts of our body also need proper care to stay healthy. Today, we'll learn about our skin and hair, which also protect and reflect our overall wellness. Motivation. Before we start discussing, let's do a short activity. Touch and feel. Everyone, gently touch your skin on your arm, then touch your hair. Observe the texture, softness, and condition. Close your eyes for a few seconds and observe how they feel. What do you notice about your skin and hair? Why do you think our skin and hair are important to our body? How do you take care of them every day? Before we explore the parts of our skin, let's first understand what the skin really is. Skin is the largest body organ that is composed of water, protein and minerals. It protects our body from any bacteria, germs and regulates our body temperature. The nerves in our skin help us feel cold and hot sensations. Now, let's take a closer look at the structure of the skin. Based on the diagram or structure, which do you think is the layer that protects us from germs? Among the three layers, which one do you think is the largest part of our skin? Which layer do you think is closest to our muscles and bones? Very good, you made your best guesses about the three main parts of our skin, the epidermis, dermis, and hypodermis. Now, let's confirm what each layer really does and how they protect our body. First, let's look at the epidermis. The epidermis, the top and outermost layer of our skin, the part that we can actually see and touch. It protects us from entering any bacteria or germs in our body and bloodstream that can cause any infection. Think of it as our body's shield. It's the first line of defense that protects us from bacteria, dirt, and germs trying to enter our body. When you get a small scratch or cut, that's the epidermis being damaged, and that's why we need to keep our skin clean to prevent infection. It also helps protect our body from too much sunlight and keeps water from escaping, so our skin doesn't dry out. Now, underneath the epidermis is the dermis. It is the middle layer of the skin, it makes up 90% of our skin thickness. It contains collagen, protein, and elastin that keeps the skin strong and flexible. It is where the roots of the hair follicles are attached. This is the thicker middle layer that contains our sweat glands, oil glands, blood vessels, and hair follicles. The dermis gives our skin its strength and flexibility. It's also the place where hair follicles are attached, that's where our hair begins to grow. Why do you think the dermis is thicker than the epidermis? Finally, at the very bottom, we have the hypodermis, also called the subcutaneous layer. This part is made mostly of fat and connective tissues. In simple terms, the hypodermis acts like a soft cushion or padding underneath our skin. Imagine it like the foam inside your shoes, it helps absorb impact when you walk or run. The fat in this layer is also important because it stores energy that our body can use when we need it. That's why people who don't eat enough for a while might lose this fat layer and feel colder easily. So overall, the hypodermis helps protect what's inside our body, keeps us comfortable with temperature, and even stores energy for our daily activities. Now let's talk about how we can take care of our skin. Remember, our skin is our first line of defense, it protects us from germs, sunlight, and pollution. So we need to keep it healthy and clean every day. Let's go through some important tips one by one. 1. 
Apply sunscreen, even if you are indoors, and use at least sun protection factor, SPF 30, for your skin protection. Even if we stay inside, sunlight can still pass through windows and damage our skin. And also some indoor lights, including fluorescent bulbs, can emit UV radiation. That's why applying sunscreen is important, it acts like a shield against harmful UV rays. SPF 30 or higher gives good protection, especially if you go outside, so don't skip this step. 2. Avoid too much skin tanning because it can cause skin damage which can even cause skin cancer. Some people want to get tan skin by staying under the sun too long, but remember, too much exposure can cause skin damage and even lead to skin cancer. It's okay to enjoy the sun, but protect your skin by using sunscreen, umbrellas, or hats. 3. Do not smoke because too much nicotine present in cigarettes can cause skin wrinkles. Smoking is not only bad for your lungs, it also damages your skin. The nicotine in cigarettes makes the skin lose its stretchiness, causing early wrinkles. So if you want to look young and fresh, stay away from smoking. 4. Use mild soap and facial cleanser in washing your face. When you wash your face, avoid using strong or harsh soaps. These can make your skin dry or irritated. Use mild soap or gentle facial cleansers instead, especially for your face. 5. Take a bath daily and use moisturizing lotion to prevent dry skin. Taking a bath helps remove dirt, sweat, and bacteria from our body. After bathing, it's a good habit to apply lotion, it helps keep your skin soft and prevents dryness, especially during cold or windy weather. 6. Learn to manage your stress, because it can make your skin condition worse. When we are stressed, it can affect our skin. Some people get pimples or rashes when they are worried or lack sleep. So it's important to relax, take deep breaths, sleep enough, and find time to rest. A calm mind helps make healthy skin. So remember, class, taking care of your skin isn't just about beauty. It's about health, cleanliness, and confidence. When your skin is healthy, you feel good and ready to face the day. Now class, we're done learning about the skin, the body's largest organ. Let's move on to another important part of our body that also needs care and attention, our hair. Let's first understand what hair really is. Hair is a thin, thread-like outgrowth from the epidermis, that's the outer layer of our skin. It grows on many parts of the body, especially on the head. As the saying goes, our hair crowns our beauty. Would you agree? It means that our hair is like a crown that adds to our overall appearance. Just like a crown makes a person look elegant and confident, our hair helps us look neat, clean, and attractive. Hair is not just for appearance, it has important roles. It helps protect our scalp from sunlight and keeps us warm. It also plays a part in our social and emotional identity, we often express ourselves through our hairstyle. Now, just like the skin, the hair also has different parts. We'll focus on two main parts, the hair shaft and the hair follicle. Let's learn what each part does. 1. Hair shaft is the visible part of the hair that sticks out of the skin. The hair shaft is the part of the hair that we can see and touch. It sticks out of the skin, that's the hair we comb, style, or color. It is made up of three layers. The cortex, found in the middle, it contains keratin, a protein that gives our hair its strength and color. The cuticle, or the outer layer, protects the hair from damage. The medulla, which is the innermost part, is sometimes present, usually in people with lighter or gray hair. So when you look at a single strand of hair, it's not just one piece, it's a layered structure built for protection and strength. 2. Hair follicle is the part of the hair that is found beneath the skin. It is a very important part which is responsible for the continuous growth of the hair. It's like the hair's factory. Inside the follicle, new hair cells are made, and as they grow, they push older cells upward, that's how your hair grows longer over time. So if the hair follicle is damaged, for example, by infection or chemical burns, it can stop producing new hair. That's why we should always protect both our hair and scalp. Now that we've learned about the parts of the hair and why it's important, let's think about this. How do we actually take care of our hair every day? Our hair can easily get dry, oily, or even damaged if we don't care for it properly. So, to keep it clean, shiny, and strong, we need to follow some simple but important hair care routines. Let's take a look at the proper ways on how to take care of our hair. 1. Shampoo your hair. Shampoo must be diluted with water, rub between your palms, apply and massage for 30 seconds with your fingertips, spreading it onto your hair to make sure that the sebum, oil, and dirt or dust that build up on your scalp and hair will be removed. 
When shampooing, always mix a small amount with water first. Massage your scalp gently using your fingertips, not your nails, to remove oil and dirt. This helps keep your scalp clean and prevents dandruff. 2. After washing your hair with shampoo, rinse thoroughly and apply a hair conditioner to help repair damaged hair caused by heat from the sun and using hair dryers. Conditioner helps repair hair damaged by heat or pollution. It makes your hair smooth and easier to comb. Just remember to rinse it thoroughly so your hair doesn't become sticky. 3. Wash your hair with warm water, and thoroughly rinse your hair using cold water to close your hair cuticle to make it soft and shiny after shampooing and applying hair conditioner. Warm water opens the hair cuticle to clean better, while cold water closes it to make your hair shiny and smooth. So always finish with a cool rinse. 4. Towel dry your hair. Avoid using a hair dryer because it will make your hair become brittle. After washing, gently pat your hair with a towel instead of rubbing it harshly, this prevents breakage. You can also let your hair air dry naturally. Avoid frequent use of a hair dryer, since too much heat can make your hair dry, brittle, and prone to split ends. 5. Eat nutritious foods that will make your hair healthy and manageable. Healthy hair starts from the inside. Eating fruits, vegetables, and protein-rich foods helps your hair grow stronger, shinier, and more manageable. Individual Reflective Activity Before we end our lesson, let's take a few minutes to reflect on how we actually care for our skin and hair every day. My Skin and Hair Care Routine Today Instructions Recall what you did this morning after waking up. Write at least three, three, things you did to care for your skin and hair, e.g., washing your face, combing your hair, applying lotion. For each action, explain why it is important for cleanliness. Protection. Good grooming. Be ready to share your answers with the class. Example. I washed my face. Helps remove dirt and oil so my skin stays clean and fresh. Guided questions. How do you protect your skin from sunlight and dirt every day? What hair care habits do you practice before going to school? How can you help a family member or friend who has unhealthy skin or hair? Before we move on to our short quiz, let's take a moment to summarize everything we've learned today. Enumerate the following. Three main parts of the skin. Two main parts of the hair. Three ways to take care of your skin. Three ways to take care of your hair. All right, class, let's now check how much you've learned from our lesson today. Direction. Write true if the statement is correct and false if it is not. The skin is the smallest organ in the human body. The epidermis is the outermost layer of the skin that protects us from bacteria and dirt. The dermis contains hair follicles, sweat glands, and nerves. 4. The hypodermis serves as a cushion that protects muscles and bones from injury. 5. Applying sunscreen helps protect the skin from harmful UV rays. 6. Hair grows from the hair shaft found outside the skin. 7. The hair follicle is found beneath the skin and is responsible for hair growth. 8. Using too much heat when drying hair can make it brittle and damaged. 9. Taking a bath daily and using mild soap help keep the skin clean and healthy. 10. A balanced diet with vitamins and minerals helps keep skin and hair strong.